November last year, Edinburgh Zoo received two giant gifts from China, named Tian Tian and Yang Guang. This being the first time pandas had come to UK for over 17 years. Ian Valentine, who is a director of conservation and research at Edinburgh Zoo, was behind the agreement for the pandas to come to Edinburgh. He is optimistic that they can overcome the challenges normally faced and be successful in the breeding of the pandas. The female has bred before. She bred in 2009. She had twins. She hasn't bred since then. The male, he has bred with other female pandas, but these two haven't bred. So we're now actually into the process of trying to breed the, these two pandas, and there's a lot of work, scientific work, around about that, monitoring the hormones and uh, you know, collecting samples on a regular basis. So we're now doing that. So they've only been here a few weeks, but we're already focusing on breeding because the breeding season starts somewhere around about uh, start of March and goes on until maybe uh, first week in May. This is a view not shared by Mr Will Travis, CEO of animal welfare and conservation charity Born Free. The breeding of pandas in captivity is a, an imprecise uh, science as far as I can gather. Since 1963 about 300 pandas have been born in captive circumstances of which it's my understanding that less than 20 have been born outside of China. So already the chances of success are extraordinarily slim. We've had two captive panda programs in the UK in the past, both based at London Zoo, neither of which resulted in a birth, even though one pair was there for 12 years and the other pair, which fought like, like mad, were there for about four years before the whole thing was discontinued. Initial overall reaction to their rivals have been positive. However, criticisms have been voiced by some members of the public and animal rights organisations. As Mr Travis explains. There's been a lot of public discussion about Edinburgh Zoo and the recent rent -a panda programme which has seen these two pandas come over from China just in the last few weeks. Uh, to, they're both off show at the moment um, because they have, are suffering from colic. Um, let's analyse it for a second. We're talking of two pandas, £600,000 plus a year to rent them from the Chinese government. So over the 10 year span of the programme, around $10 million will be spent paying money to the Chinese to borrow the pandas. It's about £70,000 a year, so $100,000 a year for the bamboo, which is, uh, as I recall, uh, supplied by a German company but comes from Holland. So there's all sorts of little environmental niggles that I've got with that. Despite these claims, Edinburgh Zoo believes that their efforts are worthwhile and will have a positive impact not only on panda conservation, but wildlife in general. If we can't save the giant panda, what can we save? The thing about uh, the main panda reserve is called Wulong. I mean, it's a huge reserve, it's about three times the size of Yosemite National Park. It's a world heritage site. And in uh, that park you have a, a reasonable number of giant pandas and that, that reserve is there to look after and manage giant pandas but in that reserve you have a huge range of other very rare species like uh, clouded leopards, baral. So there's a whole range of other things that are actually safe but alongside giant pandas but it's pandas that people can actually associate with. Current panda conservation practices as demonstrated at Edinburgh Zoo, have been criticised as being both expensive and impractical method of saving just one species, but it's been argued as an important tool at aiding and raising awareness for conservation practices worldwide. This is Danny Copley reporting for Elements.